Okay, let's talk about cellular respiration. This is going to be a simplified explanation of cellular respiration. There are a lot of steps to it. I just want you to get the big picture and I'm going to show you some end products of cellular respiration. So we're going to leave out a lot of steps. But let me give you a, a, a basic breakdown. We're going to have glycolysis. We talked about that in the last video. Eventually it's going to lead to the Krebs cycle. So we have Krebs cycle. And we have the electron transport chain. I'm just going to write ETC down here for electron transport chain, so that way you'll know what it what it means. So one thing that I didn't really talk a lot about last video was glycolysis, and if oxygen, this can happen in the presence of oxygen or without oxygen. If it happens without oxygen, you're going to have something called fermentation. So fermentation will eventually happen. That will lead to lactic acid. And if lactic acid builds up, then the muscles are going to fatigue. And before I move through cellular respiration and kind of break it down into its largest components, I want to link these two energy systems. So we have the glycolytic energy system here with glycolysis. So that way you can kind of see how the lectures are linked. We have the aerobic oxidative energy system. So that way when I'm talking about these energy systems you can be thinking of cellular respiration and how they fit in. So let's uh, let's talk about glycolysis for a sec. Let me pull this up. So that we'll have a little bit more room. So let's start with six molecules of carbon. So we have 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. So that's glucose. So we're breaking down glucose here. And we'll add that to six moles of oxygen. So six moles of oxygen. Actually, let me go back and delete that off, make that look better. So we have six moles of oxygen. So if we're going to do some sort of aerobic workout here, we've got to make sure that we have oxygen present in order for cellular respiration cellular respiration in order for that to happen we have to have oxygen so once cellular respiration happens we're going to be left with 6 CO2 plus <clears throat> 6 water 6 molecules of water plus some energy And that energy is also going to produce some heat. So let me undo that real quick. So that energy is going to produce heat. We should get about 38 ATPs. And that depends on optimal conditions, how efficient the cell is. So let's, let's look at this real quick. So we've taken in some sort of macronutrient, some carbohydrate, and we've converted it to glucose. And so we started to work out, so we had to start breathing a little harder. And so that's where the oxygen is coming from. And then cellular respiration starts to happen. So we breathe out. So we're breathing out some CO2 to get rid of it. because It's a byproduct. And then we start to sweat. So we've got to get rid of some of those hydrogens so that acid, we don't become more acidic so lactic acid doesn't build up so we'll get rid of those by sweating and then we'll have some heat production and once we start to sweat that also helps us thermoregulate so as that heat starts to build up 
we've got to cool down some way and so once we sweat and that evaporates that helps cool us down so this is kind of the end product of cellular respiration so let's go back through this one more time just so that it makes sense and then I'll kind of show you how much ATP we're generating for each one of, uh, of the parts of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. So we have glucose, that's our food that we took in, our carbohydrate. We started to breathe harder, so this is inspiration. So once we started to work out, we had to get rid of that CO2, so expiration, we started to breathe out started to sweat here so once we started sweat that also helped us cool down from the heat being built up from the energy being produced and we netted about 38 ATPs now for most people it's going to be around 29 to 30 ATPs it all depends on how efficient the cell is but under optimal conditions you would produce about 38 ATPs <clears throat> let's go in here and and look, so let's write down glycolysis again. So we have glycolysis, we have the Krebs cycle, and we have the electron transport chain. So for glycolysis, we're netting about two ATPs, and we're also getting some. Uh, let me erase that, that didn't go there. We're also getting two ATPs here. In the Krebs cycle. And we're getting about maybe four ATPs in the electron transport chain. So for the Krebs, I mean for the for glycolysis, you're also getting some pyruvate, and that's what we talked about last time when we were breaking down glucose into P-gal and eventually we'd get uh, pyruvate, so we'd have two pyruvates that could go into the Krebs cycle. So net all, or we're, what we're netting is 38 ATPs for cellular respiration. So this is the big picture. I'm going to go back through it one more time just so that it makes sense. We have glucose, we took that in, we had to start breathing harder because we were working out. Cellular respiration happened because we were taking in enough oxygen. So we started to expire CO2 and we started to sweat to get rid of some hydrogens, but that also helped cool us down once the sweat evaporated. We have some energy that produced heat and since we were sweating, we could cool our bodies down and thermoregulate and we netted about 38 ATP. So this is where it happened. We got two of those ATPs from glycolysis that started us off. We got two ATPs from the Krebs cycle. And then we got about 34 ATPs from the electron transport chain. And this happens out in the mitochondria, which we will talk about later. Let's draw a little mitochondria, which is an organelle within a cell. So that's where that process happens. So I hope this gave you a broad overview of cellular respiration. We left out a lot of different steps. But if you understand this right here, you will have a good grasp of cellular respiration and what you get from it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.